Welcome everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction, Christian. So I want to speak about ideal and efficient and precise data flow analysis framework that automatically reasons about aliasing on the fly. We'll see what that means during this talk. This is joint work with Karim Ali from University of Alberta and Eric Bodden from University of Paderborn. During the past days of this conference, we've already heard that we are not there yet. We aren't at a stage where we have secure programming languages. And so we have to reason about the current situation and improve this situation. So we have to secure securely or check for secure software implementations. So one example is like developers typically leave their passwords in their code. That's definitely a security reason that we want to care about and we should develop static analysis that could support software developers in detecting such issues. While this could be a really relatively simple static analysis, there are more sophisticated analysis that we also require, for example for quality checks that are way more complex and really are dif difficult to get in an efficient and precise manner at the same time. One such example is a type state analysis. The type state analysis reasons about usage patterns of APIs in your code. For example, we see here an interface, a file interface that has two methods, an open and a closed method, and we want to ensure that any program execution Along any program execution, our file object will be at the, at the accepting state of the finite state machine that you see on the right at the end. So I want to motivate now why it's difficult to, to implement a static analysis that checks such an issue. So if we start off by designing a type state analysis for a simple program that you see on the left, you could start off and propagate the vari variable and the type state. So for example, in the first line, our file object is in an initial state, while after that it, it will be open, so it will be in an open state. Obviously at the last line it will be in a closed state. This is a really simple example, and our data flow domain would look like a variable and a type state. Well, if we slowly extend our example and just introduce an aliasing into our, our program, this data flow domain is not sufficient anymore because if we reasonable aliasing, that means two variables point to the same object, the two method calls can be on different variables. And so what we need to do is propagate sets of variables and their type state. So only then we can update both, both variables synchronously. This means we now have switched from a, from a variable to a power set abstraction. So, but then if you extend your test cases, you see that this is not sufficient as soon as you have fields, you want to be field sensitive as in Java, then you have yet to increase the size of the data flow domain. And you need to propagate what's called an abstraction, what's called access path, for example. Only then you are field sensitive and alias. Well, that's how you would then propagate these sets. So we have sets of access paths. So, to briefly summarize again, so you start, we started off by a data flow domain that consists of a variable and a type state. We increase it to a power set abstraction where we propagate sets of variables and their type state. But then we needed, wanted to also reason about fields and we have access path and their type state. Well, this is not the end of the story. A current state of the art type set analysis actually also needed the allocation side, that is the new statement of the, of the um, object that it was tracking. And then also like a completeness flag, which was reason about like the completeness of the sets of access path. Anyhow, I don't want to go into more detail here, but the point is you increase your data flow domain and all these data flow algorithms, they're fixed point iterations and they depend heavily on the size of the data flow domain. That is exactly what motivated us to design IDEAL where we only want to propagate individual access paths, not sets of access paths, but individual ones. So IDEAL is built on top of IDE, which is a data flow algorithm that reasons about craft reachability. And it propagates along these craft edges. It propagates 
for so-called environments. IDE stands for Interprocedural Distributed Environment Problems, so it reasons about interprocedural data flow analysis. It supports context and flow sensitivity. And because it's based on IDE, we, and we extended IDE with the extension to aliasing, we call the framework ideal. So basically what it does, you fix the data flow domain to the access path, so you should not change anything here. But what you can customize is like the value for the environments that you propagate along these access paths. One example is a type set analysis. Another one is uh, like you can do linear constant propagation. But there are also other applications. So if you want to instantiate ideal, what you start is you propagate some seed. So you supply a seed, which is a variable at a statement or an access path at a statement. And then you also supply like the environment or edge function, which tell how the value flow from one to the next statement. In that case, like at the open at the open call, if file, if the variable file bypasses this call open, it will switch from, um, it will split, uh, it will turn into an open state. Similar at the alias dot close call, it will be switched to a close state. I want now to come to the design of ideal. So ideal is implemented in two phases. The first one is the object phase, and the second one is the value flow phase. So for the value flow phase, we, we generate a, um, a graph that encodes the reachability from the seeds. It encodes, encodes all pointers to the seed object. So in that example, it would look pretty simple. It just says at any statement, any pointer to the seed. Well, then we switch to the value flow phase, where we label all edges with the um, appropriate value. Well, if, we have, if you have a look at this example right now, what happens is we would like to know the state of the variable, variable file after line 4. You will see the file variables only open, because there's only one path from the seed to file in line 4. This means the information is not complete because obviously we expected that both variables alias and they should be closed. So alias and file should be in the closed state. If we look carefully, we see that actually we missed out on points on alias information here. At those two statements where the type state was updated, we actually could trigger pointer queries and ask what are what are the allocation sites of both variables like file in line 3 and alias in line 4. And what we could get, what we would like to get is the results that both variables are allocated in line 1. But also we would like to, we need the information, both of them flow to alias and file. This is exactly what um, Boomerang gives us in pointer analysis, demand driven pointer anal analysis that we um, published last year at ECOOP. And so if we have that information, we can go back to our graph and add edges. Then, because at after line 3, the variable file is, is the same as alias, we can just connect them. So what happens now if we, if we track or trace the paths, path along from the seed? We see that file is opened, but also closed. So at least we are now complete. We are not precise yet, but we are complete because file is opened or closed and alias is closed as we expected. So we can further on elaborate on that if we notice that actually the size of the points to set that we computed is just one. So we know that both variables, both queries that we triggered just have exactly one allocation size and therefore they must alias. That means we can basically remove the edges, simply speaking remove the edges from the graph, and if we do so, we have full information. That is, file, for example, after line 3 is open, so is alias after line 3, and at the end, after line 4, both alias and variables are closed. So, to sum up the value flow phase, it, 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 the responsible of the value flow phase is two kind, of two kinds. It is to back connect the aliases and also perform strong updates. Because we remove these edges, we can perform those strong updates. 
with that, I would like to come to our evaluation. So we implemented Ideal based on SOOP, which is a static analysis framework for Java. And we, we used Ideal in, that experiment, in our experiments for a type state analysis. So during object flow phase, it has success path. During value flow phase, it propagates type state information. And we compared that to a state-of-the-art type state analysis from 2008. This is, was um, implemented by Fink and others, and it's implemented on top of Vala. It uses the data flow domain that I showed in the beginning. And so we run different experiments with this analysis. The first one is, so Fink's analysis shipped with a set of test cases. Um, in total, it was like uh, 72 test cases. And for different typeset properties, like vector, like you should not pop an element from an empty vector, or um, input output are between uh, below the typeset properties of input output, we group these like open and closed calls, as I just explained. So what we did is both analyses are based on IFDS eventually. And so both of them construct graphs. What we did is to compare the number of nodes these graphs would have. What you can clearly see in this in this table is the number of nodes could be retreased, decreased enormously. So across this benchmark, we managed to have 10.4 times fewer propagations while being as precise as the earlier analysis. In a second experiment, we then wanted to know how our analysis compares to things analysis on the Dacapo benchmark. And we run all these typeset properties that we had and compared, it, compared the analysis <coughs> results. These are ratios of analysis time that I show here. So uh, like uh, in the earlier table, you saw typeset properties like key store, signature, and so on. There weren't any uses in Dacapo, so that's why we don't show any bars here. What we can see is we um, so in this chart, in this diagram, the higher the bar, the better for, for us in that case. So um, ideal outperformed things analysis, for example, on, it, on the input output properties by 1.5 times. On the iterator properties, it outperformed it by 2.5 times. It's not, I don't want to take those numbers, I don't want to judge those numbers too much because there is one really difficult underlying problem here because we are comparing two different static analysis frameworks that is SOOP and VALA and that means we noticed during profiling and also like that's why like we, we didn't we didn't we actually would expect um, we would expect like a, a speed up of 10 times as we, as we saw on the micro benchmarks but in fact what we saw like there were heavily accessed methods like in which, in which method is my variable that I currently propagate, or give me the um, class hierarchy of my current program. And those methods are really like, eventually, um, well, they, they, they change, they, they infect definitely the analysis time. So this, these numbers should be taken with care. At the end, um, we then further implemented um, a static analysis that, based on ideal, that could check for crypto misuses. So we noticed in some earlier studies that in Java, many, many misuses of the standard Java crypto API are there. And we wanted to have a static analysis that can check for this. For example, like hard-coded passwords. So what this analysis, ideal-based analysis, does is like it checks for common misuse use patterns of the Java Crypto API, but it also extracts, extracts string and integer values of certain API calls that are necessary to reason about configuration of, of these crypto algorithms. We run this analysis on a set of Android applications from 2017, and we still, our results still showed that many applications still, unfortunately, use SHA-1 and MD5, which is an outdated hashing algorithm. But then we've also found instances of DES that is also an outdated 
crypto algorithm for encryption. And then also we found like instances where passwords were not properly cleared or in blade text in, in, the, in the program. With that, I would like to finish and conclude. So with IDEAL, we have a context flow and field sensitive data flow analysis framework, but it reasons about access path, not sets of access path, and therefore it, it, we could show that we can shrink the size of the graphs that are created. It is alias aware in the sense that wherever alias are necessary, we inject the, the, the edges that are necessary into the graph. Because we get in that way an over approximation and we lose precision, we reconnect or we, we increase precision again by performing strong updates. And at the end, all that to have a more efficient framework that needs fewer propagation and creates smaller graphs. Thank you very much.